Innovation and research into drones and UAVs is at the forefront of the field of mechatronics engineering. Drones and UAVs are currently being developed to have a wide range of applications in everything from autonomous deliveries to landmine removal and even to providing internet access in rural areas. Currently, many engineers are looking into how to make drones more aerodynamic, lighter, and to have more robust applications. There is a growing emphasis on building drone and jet technologies that employ vertical takeoff and landing. Creating drones that are capable of vertical takeoff and landing, or VTOL, means creating drones that are able to hover, take off, and land entirely vertically. This is important specifically in military uses, as it increases the possible applications of drones as they are no longer limited to using prepared takeoff and landing areas. Two of the most famous examples of this craft would be the Harrier jump jet and the V-22 Offspray. Another cool factor is the flying wing design. This means that the craft can fly more efficiently, faster, and travel much further distances than when compared to traditional quadcopter drone designs. VTOL creates an interesting problem for analyzing fluid flow over the drone profile because we're no longer just looking at the aerodynamic properties as it moves forward through a fluid. As the drone is now able to hover, this increases the potential angles of flow the drone profile may experience. In this video, we are going to be analyzing the profile of a drone and how different angles of attack affect the drag and lift coefficients. When a fluid is flowing past the surface of a body, it exerts a force on it. The lift is the component of this force that is perpendicular to the oncoming flow direction, and the drag force is the component of the surface force parallel to the flow direction. The angle of attack of each airfoil is the angle made between the horizontal and the cord of the airfoil. The cord is the line that connects the tip of the airfoil to the tail of it. So when the angle of attack is being varied, we're changing the angle at which the drone will be oriented as it moves through the air. Based on varying the angle of attack of the airfoil, the ratio of the lift coefficient to the drag coefficient, CL over CD, can be observed with the goal of increasing this value. To understand which angle of attack is the best choice, the lift and drag components for each angle will be calculated. An important attribute of understanding the relationship between angle of attack and lift is the occurrence of stalls. A stall is a condition where the angle of attack increases beyond a certain point such that lift begins to decrease. The angle at which this occurs is called the critical angle of attack. As shown in the lower diagram, flow separation begins to occur at small angles of attack while attached flow over the wing is still dominant. At the critical angle of attack, separated flow becomes so dominant that additional increases in angle of attack produce less lift and more drag. Let's quickly discuss the underlying physics that is used to model these lift and drag forces. The model is based on Newton's laws of motion, specifically Newton's third law of equal and opposite forces. These are the governing equations used to represent the lift and drag forces. In these equations, FL is the lift force, FD is the drag force, rho is the density of the fluid, V is the velocity, S is the wing area, the area of the wing as seen from above, A is the cross-sectional area of the wing, CL is the lift coefficient, and CD is the drag coefficient. The Reynolds number is a parameter used in fluid mechanics that is used to predict the transition from laminar to turbulent flow. It is the ratio of inertial forces to viscous forces in the fluid caused by different velocities. As we will be modeling our fluid as incompressible to make our calculations simpler, we will have a high Reynolds number. This won't affect our calculations, but is used later for validation purposes. Based on our understanding of the governing principles of fluid flow over an airfoil, we're able to make predictions about our expected results. We predict that the coefficient of lift will increase with respect to increasing angles of attack. Although, due to stall, this relationship will only be maintained until separation begins to occur, which is typically at around 15 degrees. As the force of drag is related to the force experienced on the surface of the airfoil, we predict that the drag coefficient will increase with increasing angles of attack, as more of the surface will experience force from the oncoming flow. 
The chosen profile for the drone fuselage is the NACA-12 airfoil. The National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics created a standardized numbering system for defining wing profile shapes that are widely used today in aeronautics applications. Each number in the naming convention represents a different parameter of the profile. We chose to represent our drone body with this profile because its fluid properties have been well analyzed and so it will make it easier for us to validate our final results. ANSYS will be used to calculate the drag and lift coefficients for various angles of attack of the NACA-12 profile. As the NACA-12 profile is a known shape, we begin by loading these coordinates into ANSYS to generate the drone fuselage profile. From there, we define a large area over which the fluid, in our case the air, will flow around it. A mesh is generated in this exterior surface. The mesh is set up to have increasingly finer detail towards the foil. This will provide better resolution in the area that we are interested in and where the flow is more irregular. Now that the geometry of the drone and the surrounding mesh are created, the ANSYS Fluent Package can be used to analyze the airflow and calculate the lift and drag coefficients. Before we can begin solving, we must first set up the properties of the system. We assume that the flow is inviscid. This is done to simplify the mathematics and avoid using the Navier-Stokes equations. This also simplifies the required input variables of the system, like having to input viscosity of the fluid. We only need to define the density of the fluid, which we set to be 1 kg per meter cubed, as this is the density of air. Now we set the angle of attack. We set the x and y velocities of the oncoming fluid to account for the change in angle instead of having to redefine the geometry of the system for each angle we are solving. Now the solution can be solved. One eternity later. From the ANSYS Fluent Package, we are able to get velocity vectors, pressure contours, streamlines, the pressure coefficient, but most importantly, the lift and drag coefficients. To ensure we had a large enough sample to determine a relationship between angle of attack and the drag and lift coefficients, we ran the simulation at nine different angles within the range of negative 15 degrees to positive 15 degrees. For each of these simulations, we were able to determine the drag and lift coefficients. The values obtained were plotted, and from these graphs we are able to determine the following relationships. As the angle of attack increases, the coefficient of lift increases linearly up to the point where stall begins to occur. Note that this means that negative angles of attack result in negative lift coefficients. This is consistent with the predictions we made, although we begin to see decreasing slope at about 14 degrees, which is earlier than the typical predicted angle of 15 degrees. The relationship between the angle of attack and the drag coefficient is parabolic. The further away from zero the angle of attack is, the greater the drag experienced by the airfoil will be. This is also consistent with our predictions, as the increasing angle of attack means that more of the surface will experience force from the oncoming flow. The relationship between the lift coefficient and the drag coefficient with respect to the angle of attack is plotted as this provides insight into how to increase the lift coefficient and minimize the drag coefficient. The graph peaks at about 5 degrees, which indicates that this would be the optimal angle of attack for the airflow to be positioned in. Our conclusions from these results are that the angle of attack of the airflow should not exceed approximately 14 degrees, as this is where it begins to experience stall. The optimal angle to increase lift and decrease drag is approximately 5 degrees. Therefore, during flight, we recommend aiming to fly the drone at an angle of attack of 5 degrees. To ensure that our results were correct, we compared our results to experimental and analytical data. As the NACA-12 airfoil shape is a well-known and commonly used airfoil shape, there is lots of data available. Firstly, our results were compared to experimental results. NASA has performed many experiments on the NACA-12 airfoil to determine the relationship of the coefficient of lift and angle of attack. Although the experiments involved different Reynolds numbers than ours, the Reynolds numbers for the experiments were very high, for example, equal to 6 million. 
which indicates conditions where the fluid is essentially incompressible. Based on our simulation, we assumed the flow to be inviscid or incompressible. Theoretically, an inviscid flow has a Reynolds number of infinity. The shape of our CL versus angle of attack graph is very similar to the experimental results, as are our values. These experimental results confirm our simulation results. Next are simulation results were compared with an online airfoil tool resource that provides information on airfoil modeling based on airfoil data from the University of Illinois Applied Aerodynamics Group. This is a graph of the drag coefficient versus the angle of attack. Similar relationships can be seen between our simulation results and the verified experimental results. This is a graph of the relationship between the angle of attack and the coefficient of lift over the coefficient of drag. Now, why all of this analysis? Why is it significant in today's world? With projects such as Amazon Air and Project Wing at Google, the applications of drones are becoming increasingly complex and the industry is rapidly growing. In order for drones to be successful in applications such as package delivery or landmine removal, it is essential that they are fast and fuel efficient. Engineers analyze airfoil profiles for wings every day for flying vehicles. However, there remains a lot of work to be done on the profiles of drone fuselages. The work we are doing is for the purpose of designing a highly fuel efficient drone that requires less power from its vertical rotors as it flies forward due to the lift created by its fuselage profile. In a world where fuel is becoming increasingly more expensive every year, the success of a business and protection of our environment depends on fuel efficient vehicles. Our results show that the angle of attack of the NACA 12 shaped fuselage has significant effects on the lift and drag forces experienced by the body, proving that the fuselage profile of a drone and the angle at which it flies forward is important to consider when engineering for fuel efficiency. This opens up areas of investigation into how the lift and drag forces affect fuel efficiency of the drones, creating jobs for mechanical and mechatronics engineers. As drones become more advanced and fuel efficient, their capabilities and applications will continue to expand into more industries. They will be able to deliver packages over longer distances, perform longer search and rescue missions, and more. Thank you everyone for watching, and we hope you enjoyed what you learned today. Let us know in the comments below what you particularly liked or disliked about this video. Sincerely, John, Will, and Emily.